to We Crochet. We are so happy to see you today. We've got some fun things that we're going to talk about today on uh, our live video. Our topics are crochet slang. So stick around to learn some hot crochet slang. And I have a special guest with me today. Hi, guest. It's Nikki from Nikki's Homemade Crafts. How are you? Hi. Good. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Okay. So do you prefer to be called Nicole or Nikki? I'd go with either one. Um, typically in a crochet community, I go by Nikki, but okay. it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> so either one's fine. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about yourself for um, those in our audience who might not be familiar with us? With you? Uh, yeah, I my brand is Nikki's Homemade Crafts and my Facebook page actually says crochet patterns and tutorials because it's easier to find me that way because, you know, I only do crochet patterns and tutorials on it. So all of my things are video and I've been doing this since 2016. So and I've grown steadily with videos and I love teaching, uh, especially through video. And the cool thing about it is I'm, I don't just do the how to, but I give you a little bit of a background so you can apply it to other things not just a specific hat but also a scarf or whatever it is so I always apply to other things so yeah you get a little bit more than just the how-to for me and yeah I have lots of free crochet patterns love using we crochets yarn absolutely my favorite in the world and yeah I have lots of things to share so let me know so definitely go like Nikki on Facebook and visit her at Nikki's homemade crafts.com she's got a ton of product reviews for a lot of our products, actually, a lot of our yarns and tools. She's actually gotten them and used them and she'll give you her honest opinion about them. So yes. um, it's it's uh, really nice for us because we're an online only craft store. So it's great to have other people who are able to get their hands on our yarns and um, talk about how they feel and how they work and stuff. So check it out at Nikki'sHomemadeCrafts.com. Um, I just want to greet some people. Let's see. We have Tara who's just come in. Hi, Tara. How are you? Uh, good to see you. Um, and let's see what else do we have. Uh, oh, Nikki, since we're doing coffee and crochet right now, I have to ask. Yes. Are you drinking a hot beverage or any beverage? And can you tell us more about it? Yes, I am. I have my coffee ready to go. I drink coffee with a little bit of milk <laughs> I've had for a long time nice. I don't think I will ever change I tried black coffee because I know I'm trying not to have so much milk but it's not working for me that's just it doesn't taste right <laughs> yeah so I'm yes. also drinking coffee, with coffee milk. drinking coffee in my vintage Oregon mug oops love it stick since I'm from <laughs> Oregon this is one of my favorites um one of my hobbies is a Facebook one one of my hobbies <laughs> normal days is to go thrift store shopping, but I haven't been able to do that lately. So I guess I hear you. I miss it. But um, <laughs> All right. So we let's say we, let's say hi to a couple more people. Debbie from Aberdeen, Scotland. Hi, Debbie. How are you? She is settling down with her hue shift Afghan to listen. Oh, my goodness. That's so wonderful. Thanks for joining us, Debbie. We have Carrie from Oklahoma. Hi, Carrie. How are you? And she also says amen to coffee with milk. So there you go. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, people are still joining us, but I want to jump in because I'm really excited to talk about crochet slang. Um, yes. you, you may have seen online, a lot of people use these um, short terms or um, abbreviations to talk about different things, different aspects of crochet. So Nikki's going to help us. She's going to illuminate some of these these abbreviations and uh, we're going to learn a bunch of fun things today. So let's start with some easy ones. First of all, we have some slang names for crocheters. Can you tell yes. me some of those, Nikki? Well, we have whip, which a lot of people know, and then some people don't. Uh, so that's work in progress. Right. Pretty much anything you're working on right now, as soon as you start a project and before you finish it, it's called a whip. So and sometimes you see whips. Work in yes. progress. Yeah, and then sometimes you see it with an S. That just means you have lots of them, like I do. <laughs> uh, me too, me too, me too. So that one's a funny one too, because we talk about that on these live videos and podcast, the podcast. And when you say whip out loud, it kind of doesn't have the the same, uh, like, the feel as it does online when it's spelled out so it's always that's true and i even have a whip show which is called the whip wednesday crochet oh, show nice. on facebook so yes i do use it too and i hope that most of my followers know what it means <laughs> yeah that one you need to know if you're a crocheter you need to know that um yes 
So let's see. Here's another one. Cal. C-A-L. Uh, Cal. Cal is, you know, related to Cal, which with a K. <laughs> so we have crochet along. That took me, by the way, years to figure out. It's like, what is this? Everyone talks about it. Took me forever. Once I was a designer, then I finally figured it out. Got but it. yeah, Cal, C-A-L is crochet along. And then K-A-L, K-A-L is uh, knit along. So yeah, right. that's where they're coming from. So really. they're basically pronounced the same. So you don't know what people are talking about if you don't have context. But that's true. Here at We Crochet, <laughs> it's always crochet along. <laughs> yeah, that's a, this is one of the ones that you will never really he hear someone say it out loud. Cal, nobody says Cal. They will write it, yes, but typically people say crochet along. It's just, yes. I don't know. That's one of those you don't say as abbreviation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I always feel like I need to say it and say, I need to say Cal and crochet along, both both things. And then um, you have MCAL, which oh, I don't think that? I'm... MCAL would be the mystery crochet along. Ooh, and you've done some of those, haven't you? I have. I actually did one just a few weeks ago, which we made this cute little <gasps> bunny Aww. as a tissue box oh cover. My goodness. And I used bulky and uh, mighty stitch yarn for that. And oh, I even nice. Gave it a little bit of a makeup there just to give it oh, a little I bit of a Oh, I see that. Flame. That's so cute. <laughs> so oh, just to make it cute <laughs> that is adorable uh, let me say hi to a few more people who've joined us tara who already said hi says she has her coffee in hand um abby has joined us hi abby how are you and camden is drinking coffee out of her llama rama mug and she put a link to that in the notes in the the comments here Love um it. allison pace has joined us from brighton Michigan. Hi, Allison. And she's working on ear savers for healthcare workers. So that is those little bands with buttons that you can um, put at the back of your mask if you're wearing um, a covering mask and you can uh, loop the little straps around the buttons. So that way they don't have to go around your ears, which is really awesome. Um, and then Leslie says, hello from Humansville, Missouri. Nice to see you, Leslie. Thank you everybody for joining us. We really appreciate it. If you like these live lives, please be sure to follow us on Facebook and click the notification button, which looks like a little alarm bell. Um, and we do these every week. So please join us. We are so happy to see everybody and connect with people um, via the internet. Amazing world we live in right now. And then finally, Terry says hello and working on getting a cup of tea. So let's continue talking about crochet slang. That's what we're talking about today. All right, here's another easy one, Nikki. C2C. Oh, I love that one. Corner to corner. Oh, I love corner to corner. They're fun because you can make quick projects and you have a beautiful picture in the end. And it seems like you crochet faster with a corner to corner than you would with a graph gan, which is typically done in single crochet. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice to be able to make beautiful, quick pictures. Repeat Crafter Me is one that I learned corner to corner from because she has so many of them mm -hmm. and yeah so she she has a lot of them i do have several of them too my biggest one is the alphabet and numbers uh how do i call it alphabet and numbers corner to corner blanket i think that's what i call oh, it oh cool so yeah, corner to corner huge. so if anyone out there doesn't know what that is it's um a technique for making blankets like nikki said uh, with pictures on them like a color work technique but you start from the corner of the blanket and then you crochet diagonally um, to create the graph. Yeah. And then if you want to know more about that, subscribe to our email list at We Crochet because we actually have an email about how to do corner to corner this week. So don't miss that. Um, let's see. What else do we have in these crochet slang abbreviations? All right. What does LYS stand for? That is your local yarn store. So most people take it as just those fancy ones. And I say fancy because yeah. they typically have higher priced uh, luxury yarns, you know, $20, $30 per skein or hank. Yes. Uh, but in my opinion, I feel like we shouldn't leave out Michaels and Joanne's on those ones. You know, I believe they're still local to you. They should be still considered your local yarn store, even though they're a big brand. But yeah, so typically though, it is for the luxury yarns, you know, the little like say mom and pop stores that have right. yarn in it like an indie <laughs> an indie yarn store if you yes. don't have a, an lys near you let us be your local yarn, yarn store you can go to yes. crochet.com we have high quality products at, at um 
we cut out the middleman and our prices are lower, but we have just as high of quality yarns as your local yarn store. So let us be your LYS. Yes. Okay. And then next let's talk about stash. Now I think I'm going to, I'm going to say almost everyone out there probably knows what a stash is, but just in case. Yes. You don't know. Nikki, that tell is us what my a stash stat. is. A stash is pretty much where you have all your yarn, your projects, whatever, you know, I mean, for me, this is, this is my stash, <laughs> like displayed nicely, you know, it, it can be in boxes, it can be in shelves, it can be wherever you want to put it in bookshelves. Right. I used, I used to use a bookshelf for mine mm -hmm. and just put them in there. So, yeah. Yeah. So also I saw on your post about um, crochet slang, which we will link in the comments right here that you said like sometimes your stash can be hidden like a, like a pirate stash or something. So yeah, just, we all know sometimes we have to hide our yarn because we have too much of it. Um, <laughs> for instance, today I was getting dressed and I was like, oh my goodness, my clean laundry is in the laundry basket and it's under a project that I was working on last night in Afghan. So I'm like trying to dig through yarn that's yeah. stashed on top of my laundry basket. Anyway, there's some a couple of acronyms that go along with stash that I think are funny. One is SABLE, S-A-B-L-E. Do you know what that stands for, Nikki? Yeah, it's. I always have to look at it because I always from, uh, forget the complete one. It's Project Accumulated Beyond Life Expectancy. So that's, that's <laughs> table and SABLE is Stash Accumulated oh, Beyond yeah, Life exactly. Expectancy, which I think is hilarious and I think a lot of us can identify with. And <laughs> I don't know about you, but these days being at home, um, for a month straight, I've been, I feel like, I don't feel like my stash is going anywhere anytime soon, but I do feel like I've been having to shop my stash a lot more. Um, and it's like been a good time for me to look at what yarn I have on hand and yeah. try to start using some of it. So that part is a great silver lining to this that's, fun that's time sure. we're living through right now. All right. So let's see, we have some intermediate crochet terms, but before that, let me just check and see if I need to say hi to anyone. I see Ursula and Ursula wants to find the instructions for the ear savers. We will give you a link to that in the comments. Um, maybe Sarah can look that up and put it, put a link there. I know that there are some patterns on Ravelry for those. Um, all right. So intermediate crochet slang terms, Crojo. Yes. Crojo, like mojo, you know, right. so you have either crochet motivation or you don't have crochet motivation. Right. So you see, you hear a lot of people saying, I lost my crojo instead of saying mojo. Uh, so, you know, it's just sometimes we lose our crojo. Designers do that, too. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure you know what I mean. Yeah. And sometimes for me, in order to get my crojo back, I typically do yarn shopping, whether online or in a store, um, or I go through books. I have plenty of them, even from We Crochet down there. They're all nicely stacked. So I can go through them, get inspired by pictures or whatever, and then I get my crojo back. <laughs> oh, and speaking of crojo, we have a podcast episode called Reclaim Your Crojo. Um, I think it's like episode three or four, but you can find that at crochet.com slash podcast. Um, listen to all our podcasts as we always get lots of good feedback from our friends out there who listen. So check us out. Another fun thing for you to do related to crochet. All right. We just have like two minutes left to talk about these slang terms. So I want to talk about the animal related terms because I noticed that there's a bunch of ones that are animally animal names. Yes. So let's do these real quick, like 20 seconds or less. What's yarn chicken? Char yarn chicken is a little game that you play with yourself and the yarn. You work on a project. And you're not sure whether you're going to finish your project. So it's that yarn chicken. You're either going to win or you're going to lose. Who's going to win? It's either you or the yarn. <laughs> so <laughs> I love that. Okay. Next frogging. Frogging is ripping it out. That comes from the word ripping out. So rip it. it's, rip yeah, it. rip it. Exactly. <laughs> so you go backwards and you undo the project that you just did. Okay. This one might be a little complicated. This one was new to me, but what is toad? Uh, for T O A D. That, that one I always have to look up. I don't remember on top That's of my head. It's something right like now. total. It's just like basically it's a project that you're abandoning and th total something abandoning and disgust. Yeah, it's a trash object abandoned in disgust. <laughs> trash object abandoned in disgust. You will that pretty much not frog one. it and just dump just it like right away. Straight to the trash. So basically a craft fail, Yeah, um, which is <laughs> one of my favorite topics. Um, we have November in the comments who said, this is fun. I am still a beginner, so I'm loving learning the slang. All awesome. right, we have a couple more and then we're going to move on. Pigs, 
You have to look this one up probably. What's pigs? Yeah, P-I-G-S. That is yes. projects and grocery stack, uh, sacks. So it's pretty much you use, you have too many of them and you just put them into your grocery bag so you have them ready to go. I do have to say I use now my awesome handy clear bags I got for We Crochet. I just oh. removed some of my stuff, did a video on it because I believe, in my opinion, these are absolutely the best whip bags in the world because you can see through them. Oh if my you, goodness. If you're like me, you have too many of them. You can never find your whip. Well, this one allows you to see your whip. So That's awesome. I was going to say, I am totally the projects and grocery bags person I'm like the pigs crafter so I'm gonna definitely have to get some of those clear project bags that is a great tip thank you so much yeah. all right finally not quite an animal term but it's kind of related clown barf what is clown uh, barf I always have to look at the clown barf one I know that what barf means I know what it is uh, so I can tell you yeah go ahead I always forget okay, so <laughs> this happens to me a lot and I'm so glad there's a term for it so when you get one of those multicolored skeins of yarn and then you crochet it up, like you, it looks so beautiful in this game, but then when you crochet it, it sometimes is kind of disappointing. Oh, yes. So you can say, uh, it looks like clown barf. Yes, because it's related to the variegated <laughs> yarn. If you're trying to have this specific shape and things happening, you know, and, and doesn't work out well, yeah, that's yeah, clown barf. <laughs> definitely. Okay, so we only got to like half of the terms that Nikki wrote There's about. More of them. <laughs> so please check out the article. Um, we'll put the link in the notes or the, in the comments here. And then I'm definitely going to have to have you back again Nikki, yes. so we can talk about crochet slang part two, maybe next For month. For sure. Yeah, I need to add more to them. <laughs> All right, let's see. Who else do we have? We have Allison. She says, oh, those clear, clear totes are awesome. Yes, they are. And we have a link to those in the comments. Um, let's see. And, and let me talk to everyone out there at the, uh, in the audience right now. What are you working on? Post a picture. If you have one, let us know what you're working on. Let us know if there's anything you'd like to hear us talk about in future episodes or if there are any guests you would like us to try to have on the show. We will be happy to try to do that. Um, and uh, we also have a note in the notes that says those clear project bags are available in a few sizes as well. So look yes. for those there. And speaking of products you can buy on crochet.com. Whoops, my earphone fell out. Just a second. Technical, technical details. <laughs> hey, <happened>. Heather. <laughs> speaking of technical <laughs> difficulties, what? Look who's here. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I just wanted to stop in and say, uh, I'm, I'm behind the scenes. Here's a little bit of transparency. I'm behind the scenes. I'm here. And um, yeah, I just wanted to jump in and be like, Heather, thanks to, thank you for saying thank you to everyone. And yeah, we're reading your comments. We're trying to get links to you. Um, if we don't get to any comments right away, we will definitely get to them later. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But please, while this live stream is happening, share it with other people. It really helps other people reach out. And especially in this these uncertain times, it's really nice to connect with people, reach out to a community. I know I hear from my friends sometimes, like they're like, oh, it's so lonely here. And I'm like, it's got you. We have things like Facebook Live, we've got video chats. So it's really nice to just share and connect with people in all of this time. Excuse me. Uh, other things. Yeah, just what else, Heather? I'm, I'm like, I'm, um, I'm drowning. Oh, don't, just look, uh, <laughs> if you don't know what we're doing today, we're, we have been talking about crochet slang. So we crochet at Facebook Live feed if you don't even know what you're watching. Um, my name's Heather. I have Nikki here with me um, from Nikki's Homemade Crafts .com. And producer Sarah is also on the screen right now. Uh, one of our favorite neighborhood characters. And <laughs> uh, oh, I do want to say this is sweater. I'm wearing my sweater that I finished that I keep I talking it. about on the podcast. And I wanted to show it off. It's kind of hard to show in the live. But it is a floral tapestry top. I finished it. I made it in shine worsted. The colors are French blue and blush. And I love it. It's so. also, if you listen to the podcast, uh, there's a great progression, if you listen to, in order, <laughs> of like Heather's process of like starting it, not being sure about it, frogging it, and <laughs> then keeping, you know, we like encourage each other. And then you kept going. And now you have a rad shirt. Yes, I great. And in our most recent podcast episode, my 10 year old son said it was his favorite project that I've made. So that was That's just awesome. reward in itself. I'm going right. to let you and Nikki get back to it. I just okay. wanted to say hi to everybody <laughs> because I was behind the scenes and I was like excited like a little kid. So you all keep going. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You're doing let's great. see. We have Eve who's joined us and she's working on a cow mosaic blanket. That sounds really cool. I want to see a picture. And Nicole Chase says, it looks great, Heather, about my sweater. Thank you, Nicole. 
And Ashley Parker also says, looks awesome. Love the sweater. Thanks. I wasn't planning on asking for compliments, but I really appreciate it. Um, you deserve and, it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We got about 10 minutes left. So I wanted to give Nikki some time to drink her coffee. But after that, um, I wanted to give her some time to share with us um, some of the stuff that she's been working on, some of her favorite projects, and then also some of her yarns and tools that she recommends. So Nikki, take it away. Yes. Show us some projects. So I pulled some projects out and I know some of them are kind of Chrissy related, but hey, there's never a good time to start Christmas projects. So I believe that right now is the perfect time to do that because yeah, mine definitely. as well, because you know, you're home anyways. So I have this cutie, which is um, pretty much uses two different types from We Crochet. This is the Mighty Stitch yarn and then the uh, Fable Fur yarn, which by the way, I said it wrong for so long. Uh, oh, <laughs> I really? didn't know how to say it. Oh. And someone told me it's like table, just with an F. I'm like, oh, oh okay. How did you say it? Fable? Yeah, Fable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's a Fable Fur yarn, which I absolutely love. It's my, my favorite one. And you can see a whole stash back there because I'm still working on a cardigan and this is going to be a complete cardigan in the end. So I'm really excited for that. And then I made my own pom-poms using the same yarn, which is like so fun. This is pretty much two patterns and ones yeah you can change out the colors and then it's not a santa one anymore nice yeah. nice this is my santa one love it on the we crochet blog which is blog.crochet.com we talked about what to crochet with uh fable fur yarn and we featured your our, your instructions for how to make the pom-pom as well as yes. some of your other projects that you made with fable fur so check that out um we'll put a link to that blog post in the in the comments here and um, also, I have some hot news about Fable Fur. We only have like five or six colors right now, but we will be having some new colors coming up. Oh, I'm so excited. This year. So I'm look so for that. excited. And we have some more comments. Rhonda is working on a Tunisian shawl test. That sounds cool. Um, Jane is working on lap blankets to donate to a local hospice. Thanks, Jane, for doing that. We really appreciate you giving crochet to your community. Jennifer says, I love that Santa hat. Yes, it's awesome. And it uses the Zuzette stitch. So if you've never used the Zuzette stitch, I have a Suzette. tutorial on that. Uh, it's pretty much a combination of single and double crochet. Um, cool. So, and I use the same one on this one. So Ooh. same yarn, just different pattern. So this is also the Zuzette stitch. So this is obviously a stocking, not a normal stocking. Christmas stocking. Um, yeah. And then you use also the Fable Fur yarn on the top, which nice. is like perfect. That's so so cute. the good thing is you don't have to do sizing on this one. So, and you only nice. need one sock. You don't need me too that <laughs> so, is a good like, point right so yeah i use that one and then i have also this beautiful one right here which is kind of a combination of two different uh actually three different yarns right we have the mighty stitch in between i always forget this one Comfy i think this color is, mist yes mm -hmm. I, oh, I, why do i always forget that one i love that one i forget so, it too so yeah, this one, and then of course, you know, nice pom pom on top, which obviously moves around because I'm holding it in my hand. But it. yeah, it's awesome. Love it, love it. And it gives a nice texture to it. So this is the Ripple hat right here. So yeah. Cute, that is cute. We have a couple of comments and questions. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting, but I just wanted That's to make fine. sure to get everyone. Montana says, I'm working on some doll clothes test patterns. Yeah, that sounds so fun. And also, Montana wants to know when will issue three of the magazine be available. We have the the downloadable ebook right now as a preview for you. Um, you can get it right now on crochet.com, and uh, the print version of the magazine will be available um, at the beginning of May. So look for that I on crochet.com that magazine it's awesome it's like book like it's so luxurious the paper is so nice it's not one of those you know pa magazines you get at the store you know whatever store it is um and it's it's just really high quality i just love it it's like so thick and i'm like wow how is this a magazine it should be considered a book <laughs> it's yes awesome. okay so in the in the comments we have a link to your suzette stitch tutorial and comfy Thank color you. mist so let's move on. Do you have any favorite tools or yarns you'd like to talk about, Nikki? Yes, I do. So first of all, I pulled, of course, Mighty Stitch, right? I mean, I love this. I actually made a um, review on that on my Crafty Crochet Review Show, which is on Fridays on YouTube at noon. You can sign up for that if you want. And I 
pretty much take product and talk about it. And the cool thing on it is it's not just that I'm saying what it is and how what I feel about it, but I actually work it up to and show you what kind of free crochet patterns you can use with it so that you get all in one show. So this is Mighty Stitch, my absolute favorite worsted weighted yarn. Uh, you actually got me onto it because I used to love Bravo yarn. And then you like, try Mighty Stitch. And then I was in love. <laughs> yeah, I like them both. But if you hold them like side by side in your hand, you can really yeah. feel how soft Mighty yes. Stitch is. But they're both really fun to work with. Yeah. And then my absolute favorite bulky cotton yarn is Billow. Absolutely love it. And I give you guys a little sneak peek because I made slippers, which obviously I can't put on my feet right now. That would look awkward. <laughs> uh, but I made slippers from a square and that tutorial is coming out next week so but i use billow yarn for that and use one entire hank for one set and that's like okay. perfect i love it so, so billow is 100 percent cotton it is like a, a bulky weight but it's like a thick thin texture so it has a nice kind of um just like texture to it when you use it yeah. and it comes in a bunch of cool colors um yes. i really like using it too and it's really good for summer summer and spring crochet yeah it's so really really soft that out. Yeah. We have a couple of questions I wanted to answer. One, is the magazine bi-monthly? It comes out every quarter. So spring, summer, fall, winter. Um, how do you submit pattern ideas to We Crochet? I don't have a lot of time to talk about it today, but I will put it on the list for a future episode. But if you check out our podcast, we do talk about it a lot in several of our podcast episodes. So we will have um, links to those in the, the comments here. Um, and okay, what else? Do you have anything else you want to talk about? I have one long one and I want short one. Okay, 21. Cool. cool. Either one. We can go, we can go okay. over. So. Okay. So my short version is that this, okay. Ha uh, Heather, seriously. I mean, you sent me this and I was like, oh my God, you heard me. You heard my dreams <laughs> because I had this, this, Freak, you know, this horrible plastic version I got off of Amazon and uh, it kept breaking and ruined my table because it scratched on the bottom, you know, and it didn't have this nice rubber thing right here. So this is like, oh, this is heaven. Seriously. I mean, so that's whoop. our birch yarn swift. You can get that on crochet.com. Um, I, I recommend it. getting it with a yarn ball, ball winder. It's yes. the dream team. And I did not even know how to use that before I started working for we crochet. I was scared actually the first couple of weeks that I was in the office, people were like, oh, we can show you. It's really easy. And I was like, mm, that's okay. I'll wait. Um, <laughs> but it's really not hard to use. We have, no, um, I'm sure we can show you some, share some links uh, in the comments on how to use those. I think our sister company, Nitpicks, has some video tutorials. We're still working on ours, but they have one. But anyway, I, it, I it actually is, have one. a great tool. Yeah. My review actually includes the tutorial as well. Oh, awesome. So, so, yeah. so Nikki yeah. has a, um, a tutorial on how to use it. And what that is, if you don't know what the Yarn Swift and Yarn Ball Winder are, the hank that Nikki showed you of that billow yarn before, that is, yeah. um, I used to get those from the thrift store basically. And I was like, how do I, what is this? This is horrifying. Like, how can I even use this? But what you have to do is open it up, you stick it on the Swift, you clip the little the little strings that are holding the hank together and then you use your yarn ball winder to wind it up into a nice little cake so it's a really That's great right. tool become familiar with it level up to the next level of crochet and then you can use any yarn you want they will all be available to you obviously you can still use yarn hanks without having those tools but it is a huge labor saver huge labor saver I tried it and I had a lot of knots. It was horrible. And if you use specific yarn that has like a paca in it or that's wool, that can really make a whole mess. So yeah, don't do that. You can do it around a chair and stuff, but hey, this is an investment you're gonna use for years. Might yeah. as well just get one. So it has easy, you have fun and you don't lose your crojo totally. uh, when you <laughs> crochet with a hank. <laughs> and if you can't get one now, put it on your birthday list, put it on your holiday list. Tell your loved ones that you want one because trust me, when you get it, you will be like, how did I live without this? It's yeah. definitely great tools. Um, all right, let's see. You want to talk about anything else? Well, I have a uh, awesome review about what's in your pouch. And in the meantime, while I'm showing you what's in my pouch, why don't the people watching us tell me what is in your pouch? Because when I asked that on Instagram, someone told me to put chocolate in and I was like, oh, I should do that. Just put chocolate in my little pouch. But yeah, I have, of course, my awesome crochet hooks that I got from We Crochet. I have my handy dandy scissors, which I love because it has a little you know, cover on it. And I lose my scissors all the time. We always need another pair of scissors. And the same is true 
with my measuring tape, of course, or locking stitch markers. We all lose those, don't we? Yes. Or break, you know, we always need them. And then I like to also have this in there, which allows me to check my gauge to figure out what kind of hook I have in case it rubbed off happens all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Or we lose the tag to it. And I'm like, what hook size is this now? <laughs> so this helps with that, which is actually from Clover as far as I remember. Yes, it's from Clover, but we she sells it and it's awesome. And my phone is ringing. For some <laughs> Sorry. That was an so, alarm I had set. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> Forgot so about Nikki it. Show, showed us her little zip pouch, which is um, a yes. notion pouch that we sell on crochet.com. They come in four different colors. So that coral color with silver sparkle on the bottom, you can't really tell whether it's sparkly, yeah. but it is. There's also aqua with the sparkly bottom. And then we have yeah. some more sophisticated colors, um, dark blue, like a navy blue with a really pretty, yes. oh, you have one of them. Okay, dark blue, yes. with a really pretty. Um, like a uh, brown That's bottom brown. and then yeah. there's also a golden yellow color that is like that um and yeah. so yes please tell us what do you keep in your notions pouches what notions do you have to have on hand i i agree with nikki on a bunch of those definitely yeah. the sharp scissors which we do sell on crochet.com and locking stitch markers always you you I always need them. I, you can make them if you need to. You can always use a piece of string to mark things, but it's way easier. Yeah. Just use a locking stitch marker. Another game changer for me when I came to We Crochet, learning about stitch markers. Um, I think that's about it. Nikki, do you have anything else you want to say? Do you want to tell anyone how to find you online or anything? Yeah, like that? there's there's so many things. So I, uh, you can find me on uh, Nikki'sHomemadeCrafts.com and uh, you can find me on Instagram, same one, Nikki'sHomemadeCrafts.com, same is true for Facebook. Even though the name is different, you can still find me under Nikki'sHomemadeCrafts.com or just Nikki'sHomemadeCrafts. And then uh, you can find me on YouTube as well. I have two shows every week which is the Whip Wednesday show on uh, Facebook, uh, five o'clock Pacific Standard Time tonight, every Wednesday. Nice. And then YouTube on Fridays, 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time for that, for all the reviews and my opinion and how things work up and stuff like that. So that's always really, really fun. And then, yeah, I do have courses and memberships, but we don't have to talk about that. Right now. <laughs> but in case you're interested, let me know. I'll hit you up. <laughs> cool. Um, so check out Nikki's show tonight. It's on YouTube, right? Now tonight is on Facebook. Oh, it's, it's on Facebook tonight. There. So we just join. So follow her on Facebook and um, get the notif hit the notification button so that you get notified yeah. about her show tonight. Um, don't forget to visit us at crochet.com where all of the stuff we've been talking about, patterns, tutorials, items, yarn, tools, notions, pouches, <laughs> swifts, all the things. We sell all the things crochet related. Everything on our site is devoted to crochet. We are crocheters ourselves and we love crochet. As you can see, we nerd out about it. Um, I, one last person wanted to greet. Nicole said craft needle for weaving and ends. She puts in her notions pouch. So don't forget yes. that. Yes. Yes. Um, I that have is, that here. Yeah. Oh, you have it. Um, <laughs> what else? There's so many places you can find us. You can follow us on all the social medias, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel as well. Um, Ravelry group, join that if you're active on Ravelry. Um, we talk about fun stuff there. Listen to our podcast, call our podcast. Um, I don't have the number in front of me, but it, uh, we have the number, maybe someone can put it in. Oh, producer Sarah's here with the number. Yes. She looks right. That's good. She has a, she's <laughs> okay. a phone book. <laughs> this is what she has to do for okay. me when we record the podcast. She holds her post-it <laughs> note up for me to read. <laughs> I was going to do that, but then <laughs> I forgot we're live for a second. Uh, the phone number to the voicemail, which we'd love to hear from you all. Please, please do a voicemail is 360 three, three, four, four, eight, four, seven. And I'll, I'll give you all a little behind the scenes. I'm the only one that listens to it until I decide otherwise. So feel free to leave me a message because it's me first and then I share it with everybody. Um, so I'd just love to hear from you. And just in case you need a visual, I'm gonna, whoop, there you go. Is it, can that, does that work? Is. You yeah. can also, if you don't want to leave a call, like call a number, you can record a voice memo on your on your cell phone and just email us that that file using the little share button. Email it to podcast at wecrochet.com. Yeah. Um, anyway, please join please join us for future Facebook lives. We go live every week and um, we just got we're just getting started with this, so we're still kind of working out the timing and everything. But um, I just want to say thanks, Nikki, for joining us. 
Thank you for inviting me. That was fun. Yay. What an honor. (laughs) And thank you everyone for joining us. Debbie said that was wonderful. See you next week. Thanks, Debbie. Montana says, I love the Bravo worsted weight. I've already made three separate purchases. Yes. Bravo is great, right? It's such a good deal and such a nice yarn. So many good colors. Um, And Donna says, heart, love you guys. Thank you, Donna. We love you too. So happy that we are able to connect with people in the crochet community. It's really one of my favorite things that I get to do in my job. So thank you. Thanks for joining us. Come see us next week. Keep crocheting and we will too, because we crochet. Thanks. Yes. (laughs) Bye.